Weekends are made for catching up. Here's what you missed from the KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. Oh, you got a big announcement. I do. Well, well, there's several announcements. Number one, Friday is National Queso Day. I just need everyone <laughs> okay. to know that. Just preparation. Okay. Yeah, just okay. letting everybody know. Just be on the lookout. There's going to be some good queso deals. But okay. anyway, um, and then Arkansas is actually going to play an SEC team. Uh-huh. At Auburn on okay. Saturday, so I'm looking forward to that okay. game. I don't know if I should be looking forward to that. We're going to learn a lot. We'll yeah, but that too. to me is going to reveal a lot. But I am okay. looking forward to that game. And then the big news. Better than even those two things. Yeah. <laughs> so unexpectedly, but kind of not unexpectedly, because I kind of looked it up. This has been on the ra- and it's I've, been on your radar. I've been kind of looking for some puppies. Yeah. Okay, just one puppy, but looking at a lot of puppies late at night, every night. <laughs> Little bit of obsession going on. This is what anyway, happens when you Google puppy. I know, <laughs> I know. Well, we found one, and we brought one home last night. I couldn't believe it when I got your text message. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, she actually did it!" How sweet was that video, though? And he, the puppy is adorable. He is. And Mac was so excited. That oh, was like, he, you could just tell they they instantly like. Love each other. Oh, yeah. Well, it makes me feel like Mac will be a great dad, too, because he's just walking around with this little puppy on his shoulder as he does different things around the house. So even we went to Walmart to get some little puppy toys and, and different stuff like that, and he's walking around holding this puppy as he's grabbing things off the shelves. And that's it's like, awesome. oh, my goodness, that's him as a dad one day. <laughs> but it was so cute. Um, but we're pretty pumped. So, so far, so good. He, he's, you know, he's a little guy. He will he probably won't be probably more than 15 pounds, maybe 10 to 15 pounds. So as a puppy, yeah. he's extra small, which we're not used to that. Scooby weighs 85 pounds. Scooby's so low key. I would think he's doing just fine with it. Yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. He, yeah. he looks at Scooby kind of like, what in the world are you? <laughs> because he's so, so giant. giant. But I think it's going to work out. So okay. We had a good night last night. He slept six hours straight. The puppy did, which blew me for away. A puppy, that's amazing. I know. So I'm excited okay. to see what unfolds for this week with and our new little guy. And we need a name. We don't have a name yet. We're we're contemplating. Yeah, okay. but we're open to any kind of name options if anybody has suggestions. All right, you could send those to us. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit of what we're looking forward to this week. Hope you can find at least one thing to look forward to. Two. Uh, a little bit later this morning, I'm going to share this really cool thought about for any of us who would like to learn to slow down mm-hmm. just a little bit, which I know both of us are trying to trying to learn to do that a little bit, whether it's sit next to the fire pit mm-hmm. a little bit, you even tried to take a nap yesterday, which that is like unheard of for you. I know. I, I was extra tired. I'd gotten up about an hour and a half earlier than I normally do, which we know we get up early. And mm-hmm. uh, so I thought yesterday... It was two in the afternoon. I thought, I, I've got like almost an hour. I'm going to go try and take a nap on the hammock outside. It was like, you know, really nice outside Yeah, in the mid seventies. And so I went out, laid on the hammock, fell asleep quick. My phone rings. It's like a car dealership. Your, your warranty. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, then I'm like, okay, I put it on airplane mode. Okay. I'm like, here we go. Now I'm going back to sleep. It's probably 10 minutes later, 15 feet from my head of where my hammock is, a weed eater. My neighbor. Like one of the na- is this my the, neighbor the, the on the other side of the The one that did the big bonfire? No. No, different this neighbor. It's the other side. Okay. This is the neighbor that was up in the tree the day I was trying to do the Devo. <laughs> yes. And I hear him talking to me and I'm looking around like, where is this person? Okay coming from? <laughs> like he, so. he sounds like he's in my backyard, but I don't see him. And then I look up high and in his yard, he's in a tree. Um, it, not doing anything weird. He's cutting down <laughs> branches, right. but he had just was about to start cutting down branches with the so chainsaw. He was weed eating at two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it was like two forty oh p.m. And I thought this is Monday at two forty p.m. I don't understand. Does like, he wear like work nights or something? I don't know. Okay. I, I I mean I know that. Well, I'm not going to share what he does. It, it's a good profession, but yeah. he should be doing. Maybe it's his day off. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I guess, but every time I'm in my backyard in the afternoon, uh-huh. one of those sides, the other neighbor saws a lot of things. I don't know what he's sawing, but I hear his saw going off like at two in the afternoon. It's always in this moment when I'm either trying to do a Devo, yeah. maybe I'm trying to just chill outside. 
Dude, I don't I'm, know. I'm proud of you for trying. It's well, like you keep trying and it keeps getting disrupted. Well, I was out this morning letting the puppy out. It was like 2.45 a.m. Uh-huh. And the moon was amazing. But I thought, well, I guess this is when I'll start doing my devos and and, <laughs> and relaxing outside <laughs> because another. no one is out here. I'll get me a little lamp on my forehead. <laughs> At 2.45 a.m. little hat a. lamp and read. That's it. <laughs> Ready for some good news? We are, too. Here's your positive difference story of the day. Okay, Mark, I've got one I have never heard of before. Okay. And I think it's awesome. All right. Old ladies against underwater garbage. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The O-L-A-U-G. It is a club. Uh, Wow. And this is a, a group of women, and I say old ladies. They named it old ladies. So they're calling themselves against underwater garbage. So <laughs> they search and remove underwater garbage in Cape Cod. They have a lot of fun doing it. Okay. Um, there are a few requirements uh-huh. to join the club. It was started, by the way, uh, by a woman who's 84 years old. She's the founder, Susan Bauer. The OG. She said these are the requirements. You must be able to swim a half a mile in under 30 minutes. Okay. Be at least 64 years old. Okay, so you can't be younger than that? Right. Okay. I guess that's their limit. Like, if you're too immature <laughs> if you're under 64. We don't need those youngins. Yeah. And you got to be able to free dive at least eight feet. All right. And then you got to have a desire to clean up Cape Cod waters. And if you can meet all those criteria, then you're in. And after a day's work, they're paid in cookies. And hot chocolate by the 84-year-old founder, Susan. I love this so much. Yeah, and and they're having a blast. There's a picture online of five of them gathered around this old, old toilet that they've pulled out of the water. And they're all laughing their heads off. And they've got scuba gear on. It's the greatest thing ever. And I thought... Whenever I hit 64, I was just going to say, <laughs> I you, might go over and visit them and join them at least for a day and experience this with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Anyway, I think it's amazing. And the cookies at the end. I mean, that's a nice little yeah. cherry on top. They're having a blast. That is our positive different story of the day. All right, we're trying to get some help. We might need some divine inspiration. Mm-hmm. Christy and her son, Mac, have a new puppy. And you guys cannot... Land on a name. Yeah. We, we've been going back and forth. There will be a name I like, and he's like, no. And there will be a name he loves, and I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> no. And we've heard some pretty good ones. Yeah, you're getting lots of suggestions yeah, on someone, the uh, Morning Show Facebook page. Yeah, lots on the, the Morning Show Facebook page. If you want to see a picture of the new pup, he's on there. It's the KLRC Morning Show. Go to the Facebook page. Um, might give you some inspiration on a good name because we just cannot come to a conclusion here. But um, someone chimed in this morning and said, Pepper Jack, because I love cheese. Well, Mac and I both love cheese. Yeah, yeah. I um, love I heard Clifford, Marmaduke, Milo. What is, so cute. What is Marmaduke? Um, I think is it was a, a TV show or okay. something yeah, about a great day. Right. And then Cheddar. So so it, yeah, I'd have Mac and Cheddar. Nice. Mac know, and Cheddar. Maybe, maybe Mac and Cheddar I cheese. I like the cheese theme. Somebody yeah. suggested queso, which is on point for you. Right. Um, so is cheese dip. Cheese dip is good. That's a good name for it. He's kind of cute little guy. Yeah. I still think Scrappy is a really good one. Yeah, because my other dog's name is Scooby. Yeah, you got Scooby, you got Scrappy. And people have said, name the other one Shaggy, like name the puppy Shaggy. Our last dog was Shaggy. Shaggy yeah. Um, we, he Same. passed away. We had him almost 12 years. Um, yeah. So we had Scooby and Shaggy. So we were kind of trying to do something a little bit different. Um, someone suggested Scrappy because yep. Scrappy is in Scooby Doo. It's like a cousin or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I do think cheese or cheesy because now you'll have Mac and, and cheese. Yeah, it is cheesy. Kinda, I but, think that's pretty amazing. It is cute. I was thinking of the puppy names. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, kind of playing off of your your option of cheesy, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And off of Mac's name. What about a <laughs> Macaroni. Mac-a-roni. Mac-a-roni. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think that's yeah, it. That's hilarious. It oh my goodness. That's it awesome. It falls with the cheesy. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh have, my goodness. Have a great day. Guys. Thank you. You too. We were talking earlier about 
it can be a little hard to slow down. You were trying to take a nap. And I finally slowed down. Every time you try. <laughs> My neighbor this. is sawing something somebody and then yesterday it was a weed eater like 15 yeah. you know feet from my head on the right. other side of the fence it, it could be a battle it's fine to slow down a little bit <laughs> but it's worth fighting for for sure i um i've been looking at this a couple of times when uh, my wife and i had that little spiritual retreat we did with a friend yeah uh, and part of that is just learning to slow down at a retreat it's a little easier because you make all the space but then trying to learn to do it in the day in and day out rush is a little bit harder, but it's so worth it. And he had shared this a little written piece from Ruth Haley Barton. She said this, I thought it was so good. There have to be times when you stop and gaze admiringly at loved ones, marveling that they have been given to you for this life. Mm. Times when hugs linger and kisses are real When food and drink are savored with gratitude and humility rather than gulp down on your way to something else. There have to be times when you read for the sheer pleasure of it, marveling at the beauty of words and the endless creativity in putting them together. Times when you settle into the comforts of home and become a human once again. There have to be times when you light a candle and find the tender place inside that the loved ones or loves or sorrows or sings or prayers from that place Times when you let yourself feel because you allow the tears to come rather than blinking them back just because you don't have time to cry. And there have to be times to sink into the soft body of yourself and love what you love simply because love itself is a grace. Times when you sit with gratitude for the good gifts of your life that get lost in the forgotten rush of things. Times to celebrate and play, to roll down the hills and splash in water or make leaf piles to spread paint on paper or walls or each other. There have to be times to sit and wait for the fullness of God to replenish our body, mind, and soul. Mm. That's so good. Wow. There's so much there. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. If we could just slow down a little bit this week, it's going to be worth it. Hello. Mama Jenna. (laughs) Good morning. Are you awake, Mama? Good morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm I'm caffeinated. I'm awake. She sounds fired up. Yeah, I think she's ready to win. Okay. I, I get a little bit of my competitiveness from Mama Jana. I can, t- I can tell. She's like a competitive shopper, and I'm a competitive <laughs> athlete, right? I feel that. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I told her yesterday that I wanted to win. Oh, okay. And I, I said, Christy, I want to beat you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and I just told her it wasn't happening today because I'm I'm done. I'm done with losing. All right. Well, we're going to find out this morning. All right, so it's Wednesday. We're going to do the Wednesday game. Mama Jana is uh, here to rep the Boomers. Christy, of course, will rep Gen X. And the other mama in the room, our millennial mama of twins, Lauren. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. We're so glad you're here. Uh, twin update. Boys are doing all right? They are. They're getting okay. bigger and faster every day. <laughs> awesome. Aww. That's sweet. Uh, all right. And here to help keep score and keep the peace, Chaplain Justin. Good morning. Good morning. Howdy. Not a not a mother. <laughs> yeah. no, no. Just to clarify. We yeah. still accept you. Just chaplain. Yes. Chaplain. Yeah. All right. The uh, scoreboard, well, technically yellow. Sticky note pad right, yeah. is out. We're ready to go. Yep, we got zeros. Has Gen X gotten on the board yet? Gen X has not. Yeah, I didn't think so. It was a matter of prayer this, this morning. <laughs> I was just praying for Christy. Okay, you know. okay. I appreciate it. But I just want to double check the that facts. Up. Okay, yeah. that's fabulous. It's fine. All right, <laughs> let's get started. And um, Lauren, millennials, let's put you in the hot seat first. Okay. Feeling hot. All right, your first question from Mama Jana and the Boomers. This particular week, in 1964, the TV sitcom series The Addams Family uh, premiered on ABC. It ran for two seasons. The Addams Family is a fictional family created by American cartoonist Charles Addams. They originally appeared in a series of 150 standalone single-panel comics, about half of which were originally published in The New Yorker. Oh, good grief. I think I know where Christy gets her long questions. <laughs> I, I 
literally just heard the first five words of that question, and then I spaced Zoned out. out. <laughs> just completely spaced so out. so long. All right, so the Adams were an eccentric old money clan who... Uh, were seemingly unaware or unconcerned that other people found them bizarre or frightening. Okay. Here's your question. Okay. <laughs> Which is not a character of the original Adams Family, the 1960s series. Okay. That debuted this week in 1964. Ooh. Wow. So which one is not a character? Got it. Is it Gomez, Blossom, Mordica, or Grandmama? Wow. That's a tough question. Mama Jana, were you a big fan of the Adams Family? I did watch it some. I'm not necessarily a big fan. Okay. I get that. They've kind of had a resurgence. Um, and so I have heard of this. I really haven't seen the show, but I... Let me hear those options again. Is it Gomez? No, he's in there. Blossom? Maybe. Mordica? No. Or Grandmama? Either Grandmama or Blossom. I'm going to go... Which one is not a mm-hmm. character? Yep. Yep. I'm going to go with Grandmama. It is Blossom. Oh, man. Tricky because Blossom Rock, the actress, played Grandmama. Well, that was a trickster. That was a crazy one. All right, that is a point for Mama Jana and the Boomers. No, 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 no. Got it down. I'm my official. Sticky note. No, 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 no. There we go. Yes. All right. Um, all right. So your second question. Okay. From I'll better luck this time. Christy, so this is something Gen X would know. You know you've made it big when your band even becomes a cartoon show on television. Mm. Which of these chart buster groups did not have their own cartoon series featuring the band? So which one did not? Man, lots of not questions right? this morning. Tricky. Was it the Jonas Brothers, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, or New Kids on the Block? Okay, which block. one did not have a cartoon series? Well, it's actually interesting because the Jonas Brothers are, like, from my time, and they had a show, but it wasn't a cartoon. It was, like, a Disney Channel live show. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say the Jonas Brothers. All right. That is correct. <laughs> you're, you're correct. I mean, they did. They had a live show, but, but they didn't have a cartoon, but the other ones did. Wow. You thought you had her on this I time. did. I thought I, I had her. Lauren knows her Jonas Brothers. So all these bands... <laughs> Had a show? Yes. yes. Every show. one of them had a cartoon. That's show. a lot. <laughs> it yeah. is it's a, a lot, lot of work. That is yes. a lot. All right. Score update from Chaplin Justin. Okay. Baby Boomers with one. Millennials with one. Gen X. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Zero. So far. <laughs> so far. So far. So far. All right. Mama Jana is going to stick around. Hey, by the way, Mama Jana, great job on staying on the phone the whole time with us. Wow. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. <laughs> it is fantastic. Yeah. Last week, we I'm lost her twice. twice. <laughs> But round two <laughs> is coming up. <laughs> round two of the Battle of Generations. Christy's mom, Mama Jana, joins us on the phone. Christy is repping Gen X. Of course, uh, Lauren's here to rep the Millennials. And Chaplain Justin's got a score update for us. Yes, Boomers with one, Millennials with one, and Gen X with zero. Okay. Um, it's fine. That's all right. All right, Mama Jana, let's put you in the hot seat. Oh, Okay. All right. I'm ready. (laughs) Your first question is from Lauren. So this is something the millennials would be more apt to know. Okay? We're going to play you a clip of a song. You'll have Uh to tell us who the song is from. All right. Uh Uh-oh. Are you ready? Is it a Disney movie? (laughs) It is not. It is not. I will tell you that. All right, here we go. Uh-oh. This is something millennials would know. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> all right, all the millennials are bobbing their heads, singing along. All right, Mama uh-huh. Jana, we're going to give you options to try to make it a little oh, easier, okay? <laughs> Unless you know yeah. this just right off the top. Oh, I okay. <laughs> All right. That song, is it from Paramore, 
Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, or Avril Lavigne? Mm-hmm. Those are real people. <laughs> <laughs> they are all real people. They are all real people. <laughs> oh, gosh, I have no idea. I'll give you the options uh, one more time. See if one just okay. stands out to you. Is okay. it Paramore, Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, or Avril Lavigne? I'm sorry, Lauren, but this, this sounds... I'm just going to go with Fall Out Boy. Fall Out Boy. Not a bad guess. I mean... <laughs> all right. <laughs> it is... <laughs> It is Paramore. Man, if I would have known the answer to that, Mom, I would have helped you because of our conversation last night. We were kind of doing a little alliance because we feel like the, <laughs> the millennials have, you know, won the last few Too weeks. And we were just like, we can't let this happen again. Yeah. But you were That's no help. But I wasn't. I wasn't there for you, Mom. I'm sorry. It's kind of uh, shifting into the Survivor. <laughs> it is, it is Survivor Wednesday yeah. game. All right. That is another point. For the millennials. All right, Mama Jenna. We got another question. I almost said Paramore, but I thought it was was ridiculous. (laughs) That's fair. (laughs) All right, so here we go. Here's another question for you, but this one is from Christy, your daughter. So this is something Gen X would know. In the hit movie A League of Their Own, a.k.a. one of Christy's favorite movies of all time. Yes. So your mom's seen this then, if it was your Several favorite. Times. Have you guys? Okay, so you both Yeah, she's probably it. seen it, but I don't know that she'll get this one. Okay, we'll see. Ho, ho, ho. Gina Davis plays the all-star catcher Dottie Henson for the historic Rockford Peaches. Tom Hanks plays the Peaches team manager. What is the name of the team manager that Tom Hanks plays in the movie? So the character's name. I'll give you some options. Do you remember this okay. mom at all? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. She's starting to sound a little confident. <laughs> but okay. I don't remember his name. <laughs> well, let's see if one stands out to you. Is it Jimmy Dugan, Ira Lowenstein, Walter Harvey, or Stillwell? No. I know which one it is. Oh. Stillwell's the little brat of the boy that... Gave him a hard time. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. That, yeah. That's exactly. Okay. And then Lowenstein is the guy that got them all together. And then that Harvey is that Harvey chocolate bar. So it's Jimmy Dugan. Wow. 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 You know that's way better than I thought you would. Yeah. She's like a boomer Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. A little showboat in there, I feel. That yeah. was impressive. <laughs> yeah. That is definitely a point for the baby boomers. Hey, hey Justin, Woo-hoo. what's the score? <laughs> so millennials, two. Boomers with two. And Gen X still yet to get on the board. Not on the board yet. Uh, you this know what? Game next round, any other game if is. I get both questions next round, I'm in. It's true. We got a three-way tie. That's true. Tie. That's true. All right. Anything so, can happen. That's right. Come All on, right. Christy. Christy will be on the hot seat next. There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. It's the final round of the Wednesday game. Man, Gen X is still struggling. Yeah, it's tough to watch at this point. (laughs) It's all right, you know. (laughs) You know that movie Seabiscuit? You know the story Uh, that he's always kind of losing, and then finally when it's the right time, he pulls ahead, and then he's unstoppable after that? That's all that's happening here. That's all. Okay, so like for this game, but not the other games that we've (laughs) done previously? I like to stay in the present. Right, yeah, present. All right. I'll remember that. (laughs) So I'm really feeling kind of bad. Mama Jana is joining us on the phone to rep the baby boomers. Lauren is here as well. And Christy, it's time for you to get in the hot seat. Woo-hoo! All right. Your first question is from Lauren. So this is something millennials would be more apt to know. Boy Meets World was a popular TV show. So millennials would know this. Who was the heartthrob that played Corey's brother? Wow. Chrissy looks so excited about this question. <laughs> Her face right now looks thrilled. Uh, I'm crying, Christy. 
<laughs> There's Mom, some, some do, you, motherly... do you have any idea what the answer to this is? We, we can still keep our alliance. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is fair. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I would not phone your mother if you get my dress. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So it sounds Man. like you're going to be on your own All on right. this. All right. Who was the heartthrob that played Corey's brother in Boy Meets World? Ben Savage, Ryder Strong, Will Friedel, or John Stamos? Oh my goodness. Um, I know it's not John Stamos because Boy Meets World came way after John Stamos. And he was an adult even in the 80s and 90s. We're all just looking at her. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so we just cross one off the list. Um, uh, the, the first couple ones, I heard the last name Savage, which I kind of liked just because. So maybe I'll just go with Savage. What, what was the first so name? Ben Savage. Ryder Strong mm. or Will Friedel? Because you're you're knocking off John Stamos Will, already, right? No, Will Friedel. Friedel sounds a little bit too much like <laughs> Frito, and I just don't think that's attractive. So um, <laughs> I think <laughs> like the chips. <laughs> like so Ryder Strong. Here? <laughs> there is no reason. Okay, I'm just. <laughs> I'm going to go with Savage just because ben that Savage. seems kind of studly or something. Okay. Go for it. In Boy Meets World, <laughs> the heartthrob that played Corey's brother was Will Friedel. No! Come on, Friedel! There's nothing like heartthrob about Friedel. Lauren was the heartthrob. I'm so heart sorry throb? for your loss. <laughs> <laughs> That's very Okay, next question. Let's do double okay. or nothing right here. All right, no, that, this will no, just be if, if Jana can tie me or not. Yeah, that's a point for the millennial. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if see if Mama, your alliance will hold strong. It's true. If, if, if Mama Jana gets this, which basically means she stumps you, yeah. then it'll be a tie with the millennials between Mama Jana and Lauren. So I thought they help. were tied. I thought nope. they were tied two to two. No, three to two. Now. I just got a point. Yeah. Oh, so right. you can either help Mama <laughs> Jana and force a tie <laughs> because you're going to lose no matter what. Mm. Or man, that statement <laughs> just is to like, be clear. Or you can actually you can actually get on the board. Just a minute, I need to win. pick my heart off, up off the floor. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a tough one. Man, all right, you ready? <laughs> yeah. A little bit of pressure here. Fine. Is it going to be a mom alliance or let okay. Pride win out and try to get on the board? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here Let's we go. go for it. All right. So this is a question from the boomers. Which of these things happened in the 1960s? So I'm going to give you four things. One of them happened in September of the 1960s. Mama Jana got married. Okay. Oh. Yes. Oh, all right. Um, all right. You ready for some options? Mm-hmm. Endless Love by Diana Ross and Lionel Richie was the number one song. Endless Love. Okay. <laughs> Daniel David Palmer of Davenport, Iowa, gave the first chiropractic adjustment. What? Who, oh my what in the world? <laughs> Sherry by the Four Seasons was the number one song. Uh, okay. Or Bobby Fischer became the USA's first and only world chess champion. Oh, man. He defeated the Russian. I'm surprised I don't know that when I I follow chess so closely. (laughs) (laughs) Can't believe I don't know the answer to that one. Your favorite sport to watch. One of those happened in the 1960s. Oh, my goodness. Um, Like, Endless Love would have been 70s. I'm just thinking Diana Ross. Uh, I love me a visit to the chiropractor, though. I tell you what. If that happened in the 60s, I'd be thrilled. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of chess happening in the '60s. I'm, I don't know why. There I has think been that. for centuries, <laughs> <laughs> including the '60s. Yeah. Are you talking about 1860s? Yeah. Or? Yeah, I'm totally. just kidding. I mean, all those options are so different, and <sighs> only good. one of them happened in the 1960s. Mm. Well, let's just say chess. Okay, Bobby Fischer. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, Endless Love and Diana Ross and Lionel Richie was the number one song in 1981. Okay. Wow. Daniel what? David Palmer gave the first chiropractic adjustment in 1895. Wow. Oh, a long time ago. Yeah, wow. the OG. Okay. <laughs> Bobby Fischer became the USA's first and only world chess champion September 1st, 19. 19- 
72. Oh, it I missed was it. Sherry by the Four Seasons. Four the Seasons. Number one song. Yes. Wow. Okay. Mama Jana well, knows the Four Seasons. It's impressive. Hey. <laughs> Carrie baby. Carrie. Carrie baby. Do you, do you hear where I get my singing ability? I'm going to say, that sounds familiar. Say, you know, the voice <laughs> runs in the family. Yeah. <laughs> Coming through the phone is especially, you know. Yes. Nice. All right. That means we have a two way tie. We do. Boomers and millennials tied. All That's right. Brilliant. We will uh, do a little tiebreaker from the greatest generation. Man, I bet 1895 chiropractor was like, they just like say, lay on your belly and they just jump on their yeah. <laughs> I'm sure nothing went wrong. Like, right. you feel body that pop? With an elbow? You feel that yeah. pop? <laughs> overtime is coming up. It's overtime again. We've had a lot of yeah, overtime. It's been exciting this season. Yes. We have not had a lot of Gen X wins. No, this not, season. Not, not any, as I recall. <laughs> no. I don't think we need to even talk about that or say that out loud right okay. now. I feel like that's All disrespectful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Mama Jana joins us on the phone repping the boomers. She is in a tie with Lauren and the Millennials. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do overtime and a question from the greatest generation. So, a hundred years ago, 1924. Oh, gosh. 1924. 1924, a hundred years ago. That was Mm -hmm. when the greatest generation was alive. How much would you pay for a dozen bananas? A dozen bananas? A dozen bananas. Who needs a dozen bananas? We do. We go through bananas like crazy. Yeah. Really? Yeah, the Amati. boys are eating those bananas. All right, so Mama mm-hmm. Janet, you need to think about your answer. Again, closest person without going over. Without going over? Without going yeah, over. Price is right rules. Price is right rules. Okay. I don't think we did it that Mom, way last when time. you were growing up, did you eat a lot of bananas? <laughs> Well, I wasn't alive in 1924. <laughs> I was just going to say, well, I she know, wasn't around really? in the 1920s. I, know. I realize that. I'm just thinking about me, Mom, and Granddaddy. Like, if you remember going to the grocery store, like, whatever that number is, maybe cut that in half or take a third of that. I'm just trying to. Strategy. Oh. You know. Okay. No. I, I didn't go shopping with my mom. Okay. <laughs> or at the grocery store. Yeah. I don't like to take my kids um, to the grocery store either. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mama Janet, do you have an answer in your mind? Don't tell us yet. Uh, without going over, huh? Without going over. That's the tricky thing. Lauren's already got her answer locked in, correct? I, I yeah, I, honestly, Lauren, I would have given you the last win between you and I because we both went over. <laughs> <laughs> from the, the oh, end of the week. She's ago. trying to be nice. She wow. Is to That's, be nice. Thank you, Mom, for that. So gracious. Character. Do you have any more help you want to give, Christy? Because it's been I'm really just... helpful so far. <laughs> <laughs> How many bananas? A dozen. A dozen, A dozen bananas. I mean, two bundles. Lauren, have you already written down your number? I did. I okay. said nine cents. Mm. Okay. Okay. We'll see. But I feel like everything was so cheap back then, but I don't want to go over because 10 would be too much. So nine is just a great little bit of bananas. Okay. Nine cents it is. Mm. All right. Mama Jana and Christy, I guess. <laughs> well, I I was going to say three cents. Cause three I'm, cents. Okay. Because I didn't want to go over either. <laughs> Everybody's locked in? Okay, come on. All right. A hundred years ago, 1924, a dozen bananas would cost you 54 cents. Oh, man. I I feel like I heard my mom say 30 cents. (laughs) 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 I don't think that's what It's it's just the connection. She's got (laughs) an older phone. Yeah. (laughs) That means, once again, the millennials. Oh, man. This is ridiculous. (laughs) Win. My goodness. This All is right. like, what, three weeks in a row? Trifecta? What's going on here? I don't know. Hat trick. I think fall is in the air and we're just vibing <laughs> out. Clearly. Having the best time. <laughs> Something so. All right. First wow. of all, Mama Jan, a great effort all the way down to the wire. So well gracious. Done. Thank you, Mark. You're very sweet. <laughs> well done. Christy, thanks for playing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's fun. <laughs> Okay, congratulations. Lauren and the Millennials are taking home the cheese medallion. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the deal. I have to live with Christy after these. (laughs) (laughs) 
Doing pretty good. I'm a little tired. We've had a lot of sports going on this week. I had some of yeah, Max got a lot going on. Yeah, they're like right. aver- overlapping. Baseball and yeah, was it flag football? Now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's been going? pretty busy. Uh, it's you know I think it's going great. I'm starting to you know it's kind of weighing on me if so his coach his flag football coach very organized runs practices very well and all of that. Yeah. Um. But yesterday at his flag football practice. I was thinking, I wonder if he thinks I'm like one of these like overbearing moms or like whatever. Like a stalker parent? Yeah, because yeah. where they practice, it's a little football field, but around it is a track. Okay. And so the whole time they're practicing, I'm walking around the track, but I'm the only person or the only parent walking around the track. So I, so, so yesterday. You're circling the field. Right. On the track. And so I'm wondering if that feels to the coach like i'm you know like those hawks right, in the sky like, hey, i'm watching you yeah that like circle around <laughs> yeah, it's just like the, the hawks. prey <laughs> i, I don't this know is, and this is new right this is a new coach new yes new, so he doesn't know you doesn't... right and and of course whenever i'm walking by i'm watching the practice sure almost even like rubbernecking as i get <laughs> further past walking with your head just turned. yeah just turning a few times i even walked backwards <laughs> Because I wanted to see the play. <laughs> okay. Just because I enjoy watching it. But, you know, after reflecting on all of that, I thought, I wonder if this looks like I'm... Stalking? Yeah, a little bit. And, and really, you just wanted to get some exercise in. Totally. While he's practicing. Yeah. And, okay. and last week was our first practices. We had two last week. And one of those practices, I did walk around the track. But I had a, a friend who lived in the neighborhood. Okay. She was walking with me on the track. So we were just talking. That's so that pretty, looked yeah, that looked more... Right. But now you you're know, by yourself. Now I'm by myself. And I'm watching. And I'm staring. rubbernecking. Even walking backwards a little bit. <laughs> so I thought... Later, I thought, I bet that really... <laughs> look like i was trying to be all up Circling. in their business and that coach probably thinks i'm an overbearing mom um what do you think like if you were coaching out on do the you field feel like he might have thought then a little bit possible um the the rubbernecking is a little <laughs> interesting um let me ask some more questions okay do um did you have any binoculars <laughs> no okay no uh, I didn't have any other binoc- recording devices uh like video f- camera footage uh, no. Anything like that? No, okay. which is a little surprising. Normally that, I'll video a little bit. That That's probably in your favor. Okay. I think I think a lot of, and this coming from having coached my, my boys, especially yeah. uh, when they were growing up, you get to a place as a coach, I think, where you get a little gun shy about parents because uh-huh. it seems like every team always has at yeah. least that one. Yeah. So I could see the coach being a little like, is she going to be the one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're just out walking. Like you should totally be able to do that. Yeah. And you probably so can't just. Solution? You probably can't just be like screaming out, "Just walking here." Right. <laughs> right. But what's the solution, though? Do I bring right. a friend every time? Is that what I have to do? I do think. I think the the friend gives you a good cover. I yeah. think that probably makes it better. Okay. But I don't know. All right. Well, I bet, I, I bet. How many laps did you do? I walked for an hour. So the whole practice. Well, the practice is two hours. It's, okay, it's legit. All right, that's a, yeah, that's a long. So time. I wasn't even there the first hour. Okay, but um, but now that, that you might, that might have actually helped you though, the fact that you weren't there at the beginning. Okay. I would think like an overbearing. Well, he could have thought I was in my car the first hour, and now I'm like moving out <laughs> with the recording and devices. Right now, I'm coming out on the track. <laughs> Binoculars. Closer look. You never know. <laughs> exactly. And I'm, you know, I'm five seven, five eight, like in that range, and I, I, I'm not this cute little petite chick who walks around and. So I feel like I'm a little intimidating sometimes. I don't mean to well, be you at know all. A lot about like, sports, you work code, and, and so sometimes I feel like they think I'm going to be that mom who you know right voices her opinion all the time and jumps in and i'm really not that and you don't want to be and you're because wondering. i used to coach and so yeah. i get it like I, I i get the parents like it, it's a struggle right so then you're so, wondering do you say something uh-huh. do you back off right what do you do can i walk on the track <laughs> right is that too much or do i need to make sure i have a friend with me walking so it doesn't so look like i'm trying to like be that. stalker mom uh bill one of our listeners just texted and he said now you're not overbearing at all in this world, most people are just dropping their kids off and not involved at all. 
but you're sticking around. So he sees it as a plus. You're sticking okay. around practice. You're walking around then. So if Bill was coaching, he would probably say, hey, I, I appreciate that's that. An, uh, that's an involved parent staring me down for an hour over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By the way, you can join the conversation. Call or text us 1-800-909-KLRC. Hey. Okay. I am calling to share about your conversation that you're having with the coaches. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I am 5'8". I played sports my whole life. Uh I completely understand the whole I'm not the petite chick walking around. (laughs) Right. Okay, so you get me. You get me. Yes, yes. My advice is to own it. I am loud and I am present (laughs) and I could be standing the next town away and they're going to hear me. Like, it is just who I am. Oh, my goodness. Just as long as Mac isn't embarrassed or like he understands, just own it. Yeah. <laughs> I All have right. tried a lot of different things because I was so self conscious about being overbearing. Mm. And it's just not worth it. It's not worth it. Just own it. I and can. just be kind. I mean, you're going to be kind. Yeah. You're not going to yell at them. You're not going to degrade them. You're not going to chew them out. Right. But I yeah, just I be don't know. who you are. I feel like you have unleashed the beast today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate I, that. Because I just, I have never called in, but I have also never related so well with mm, the topic. That's awesome. So, so you get it when like, you yeah. said that I'm not the petite chick walking around. I'm like, score. That's me. I'm not either. Yeah, like totally. There's something about it that you know. Sometimes people kind of, you know, look at you a little bit like, oh shoot, she's about to like, you know. Yeah take me out or something and and i'm not at all like that exactly that is so funny in a bear hug before i take you out (laughs) yeah (laughs) that is so funny hey well thank you for meeting me in that place i appreciate it you are welcome yes i see you (laughs) national queso day and when it comes to comfort foods that satisfy our cravings few things can compete with the indulgent Allure of queso. Amen. Amen. (laughs) So in honor of National Queso Day, we think it's only fair that we dive into this delicious dish. Mm -hmm. And not only are we tasting some here in the studio, but we're going to do a little queso-themed 50-50 with Mark and Christy. Uh, All right, caller number five. Who's this? Harry. Harry? Yes. All right. Harry, how old are you? Good. You're good? Are, are you good? Or how old are you? Headed to school. Headed to school. Oh, you're headed to school. Okay. okay. So how- do you have mom helping you with the game today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Right. What, what grade are you in? Try that route. Uh, second. second. Second grade. grade. Okay. okay. I, Might I be bet. our youngest contestant yeah, ever. I, I think Harry's going to do well. Okay. All right, buddy. So it's National Queso Day. Here's some questions, all right? Your first one. Um, in case you ever start feeling guilty from all the calories that you're consuming, are you worried about your calories? <laughs> no, not really. Okay, all okay. right. Yeah. Someday you will be, I yeah. promise. In case you start worrying about all those calories consumed on National Queso Day, just remember this. Queso is high in this nutrient that repairs muscles, grows cells, and helps the body function properly. What is the essential nutrient that queso contains? Is it lead or protein? <laughs> protein. Yeah. Wow. What a start for Harry. He knows his nutrients. Yeah. Harry, you're not eating any lead, are you? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, good. good. All right. Just keep that up, bud. All right. Next question. All right. Here we go. So, delving into the history of queso it takes us back to the time of the Aztecs. The ancient civilization that thrived in present-day Mexico. The Aztecs were skilled farmers and expert dairy producers, creating some of the best queso ever. One of the most delicious queso flavors was created in the Mexican state of Chihuahua. Mm. Which one of these is a type of queso that originated in Mexico? Is it queso chihuahua or queso lemur? Chihuahua. Mm. Mm. <laughs> queso chihuahua? Yeah! And two for 
two well done. for Harry. Unreal. What a performance well already. Done, sir. Only in second grade, Mark. All right, last two questions. Here you go. Queso is often called true gold. What U.S. state first introduced queso to America? Was it Texas or North Dakota? Dakota. That Dakota queso. You can't get that anywhere. <laughs> Yes, That's right. it was Texas. Not North Dakota. <laughs> I just wanted to say Dakota. I could tell. <laughs> All right. Well, here's your last question. You are three for three. You, you're already in. So for fun, a Mexican variation of queso that typically includes melted cheese with cooked chorizo and other savory ingredients often served in a skillet is called what? Queso fundido or... Nacho Libre. Mm, mm. Classic. This is tricky. What do you think, sir? Queso Fundito. Yeah. <laughs> Harry, <laughs> say Fundito for us one more time because that's so great. Queso Fundito. Fun that's yeah, it. Wow. That's it. What a performance by Harry today. Congrats, bud. Well, we're going to hook you up with some tickets to Farmland Adventures and thanks for playing 50 50 with Mark and Christy. But my life is good. Really good. It's the best. I love it. Real people. Real life. Real fun. Family Fun Friday. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christine.